So a quick recap from what we have done from the past for the triggers because these all are having the same uh, trigger explanation. Mm. Let me close the right side. Close the other task. Let's close this one. So the use cases are here. So we have done with the before insert update and delete. So while we're dealing with the before triggers, it is always impacting on the same object. While we're dealing with the after triggers, we're impacting on the some other object. Some other object in the sense it is always you are trying to deal with the um, on account, only then account is saved, you are trying to impact on others. So the after is doesn't mean that, uh, so you're not worrying about account. Of course, after saving an account only, you are worrying about other people. So likewise, this is all the actions that has been happening on the same account object only. But impact is here on the same or on some other. That is the meaning of it. I think we have, uh, these are the trigger context variables we say trigger at new, trigger at old, trigger at new map, trigger at old map. So these are the four context variables we have in order to process the records. So I think so, uh, out of three we have used, sorry, out of four, three we have used. So one is trigger at old map you have to use. Now all we have to do is we have to do a comparison between your previous record and a current record. So then I'm allowing you to proceed next. Okay. So what I'm going to do in that case is, um, so let me go to an account. So now this time what I'm going to do is an after update take aside. Um, so basically we are trying to update um, <clears throat> some of the records. So let's say for example, um, it could be one single record or it could be one or more records you are trying to update. Anything is possible. Mm. So let's jump in with after update. After update, even you have to mention here. And then you need to also have these action that should be mentioned here. Trigger dot is update. Sorry, the trigger dot is update will indicate you. Um, So trigger dot ease update will indicate you um, are you trying to do an update activity here. So here what I want to do is I want to send two things which is one is trigger dot new map and trigger dot old map. So these two things I want to send this both are type of map only, but the, the thing is um, so both are indicating. So these are the new values and this is the, the same record, the existing values. So as I said yesterday, so if, if this is the record we are holding here, if I say edit, so the contextual of this record is all, unless and until you don't change, unless and until you don't change, so these are all the existing record, all would be in the record at old map. Something if you change here and then you save it, so that would be in trigger dot new map. Same it is old, I mean the same concept of a new map and an old map of trigger dot old and trigger dot new all are same only. So they are holding list type, these guys are holding map type. But the, the original idea is same. So why you want to have use map if you see? The values you feel are more accurate and the processing is much faster than the list. So that that is the only reason. So these guys having both the versions. Okay, you take your own list, okay, trigger dot new use it. If you don't want this, you can use trigger new map. The trigger new map cannot be used in only one place. It is in insert activity, you cannot do it. That is only where it has a drawback. So where you cannot use it. Otherwise, these guys can be used in any other places. Really? Only for before insert, it cannot have. Because if you say map, they need to have ID, comma, an object. But this guy you cannot have ID, comma, an object. Why? Because it is absolutely, it's a new record. It's about to insert and where the ID will be there. So that is the reason we use the list here, trigger.new. And here we use trigger.new map is a purposely where it is an after trigger. After trigger means after an account is inserted and they got an ID, 
Okay, account is properly we have now. With that help of the account, we are trying to impact the contract to create a new record. Got it? So any questions? Um, there? No. So there's a before update, so after update method is required. I'm just passing both the values like trigger.new map and trigger call map. So here you can have the previous context when at the moment I click on a save, the same record will go to versions. One is old record and the new record. Unless and until you capture the old record like this, you'd have a old values here. If you don't capture this, always you're trying to take the new value. You're not worrying about the previous value. So then it always goes with the single version. If you expect, hey, give me two versions. I want to compare the previous and the current. So then you have to use this both. Okay. All the new versions of values will be here, here and all the, for the same record, the old version of the values will be here. So we are triggering a save. So that's the reason you are trying to have a two versions, you're sending it. And the two versions would be occupied here. So now we need to write a method. So that particularly it talks about. Uh, so this is all before and you know, after insert. I mean, any uh, difficulties in understanding the program that we are writing? Since because we have traveled from all the way from the simple records, let's say uh, simple account, simple con simple contact management, advanced uh, uh, logic that we are written. So did you find any difficulties in writing such uh, programs? Any syntax which is like making it difficult here? Is it something new here? So tell me, I can I know I explain you. Because we have traveled from how to write a for loop and the same thing we elaborated here. And then yeah. we know how to write a with conditions. So maybe I would have introduced all the new things and in terms of um, to get a better program so that I have introduced here. But however, to process the records, multiple records, you need to use a for loop here. And an idea was R2, after insert an account, we have to insert a contact. So we have to prepare for a contact records. Ready? And I, yeah. I said that I wanted to only have my, um, so while doing this, we are comparing the record types. So I'm saying that make sure the record type not equal to to the starlet. So for that reason only this statement have the cut up not equal to this thing. Why? Because the content which I'm trying to insert is not for the restaurant. It was the business or individual users. So for that we so we had this comment. To link we have this statement to be present. And we are adding to a list. So this makes us bulky fight code. So tomorrow this for loop is signing thousands of records. Still our code will stand and work very properly. Maybe. So it works absolutely with no any error code because it knows it can process with the bulk records and then you're checking the list whether it is not empty then only you're getting inside the logic okay save this value while saving this value we're just indicating that okay one of the record got failed so we don't worry we put them into a result and that could be a success or a failure okay so till now we are debugging it in later stage we would be adding an object and there we try to insert a record there where you would see something like how on accounts you are seeing it, like a tab, the same way you would be seeing errors. So that is my next motive to bring it up. So we'll do that for sure. So now our intention is to make it an after update. So prior to that, um, so just wanted to ask you a question. Are you comfortable like uh, whatever the logic that we're writing, any, any syntax or um, something that is behind the scene, which is going on of, out of your mind? No, no, no. I am comfortable. So for syntax, I'm actually Googling and stuff, but uh, you are explaining it clearly anyway. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Yeah. But this, this uh, something like a program should be relevant to something would have been done uh, existing. Of course, any logic you write, you just uh, do a few checks, right? Yeah. I mean, so, these if clauses, for clauses, these are all uh, I already have. Uh, yeah. Then it's fine. Okay, so on a general understanding, so if this is not today, let's say this is an Apex program we have. Tomorrow we're gonna write an LWC and even they also might write an Apex class. May not, maybe or may not be writing an Apex class also. A scenario could be this way. 
but al always what we do is if you go to a, a shop so you want to do is you make sure few things with you are having the prerequisite let's say uh, you wanted to go to the nearest supermarket so what you do is the first thing is you would carry your card so and the card is holding some amount so which is not not empty you're going to check right uh, the card which you take or the something like uh, upi payments you have or any transaction that you make from the digital from the online whatever it is so make sure your fund is not empty same way we are checking the the record which you're trying to deal with is not empty that's how we're processing it and uh, before that something you're adding to a shopping cart you're making sure that okay these are the items that i wanted it so we're adding all to the list so first you should add all to the list and that list you're trying to process and prior to that you're checking whether the list is not empty it's all general uh, generic thing that whatever we are applying in the real world same thing in a programmatic way it turned out but how um, smartly these all are added and now we are processing the record that that is the only thing it matters here otherwise processing getting them insert them take out them it's all a gender key terms we have using in the Salesforce. okay so yeah. we are going to try to update the account and that would impact the contact got it we're going to try to update the account so till now you are doing in a change on Kukupali, I'm going to change here the record. If you say the impact should be onto the same object, then you would have went to the before already. But my intention is not to onto the before. But here, the moment you update the Kukupali, I would go find their contacts and I will update those guys. Getting? So my intention yes. is not to update on this. This is related objects. So that is my after uh, update records indicates. So for that, what I'm trying to do is so public static so what let me say after update and then i have two things to follow here uh, so the two things would be here mm. of course it's a map of id comma account and one is talks about new map the same thing that indicus talks about because both are having same type, right? So old map and new map, all, all the definitions are same, but you're having two different variables here. See the signature, whatever you have passed, new map, old map, you have to use the same way here. Hey, Murthy, sorry. Hey, Murthy. No, uh, I'm just starting, Murthy. Um, so till five minutes before, I was just explaining. So what you've done in the previous class? And otherwise, I think, um, so we're pretty good there and explaining about um, how the code syntax is finding any difficulties to understand how easily we can understand so that i was giving some points so look at this still so far we all are used uh, all the four context variables in terms of processing the records new old these are both a type of list and we also use the map also so new and old map both we're trying to use it so that way so for any records we're processing so I think four context variables have we used. So now for your project scenario, if sometimes you would have wanted to write a trigger, so make sure um, uh, what are the conditions that they're trying to give it. They, if they ask you to compare the previous and the, um, the current record, so make sure of using this. So this could be used only where, so whether the record is already had a holding an ID, only then, then that team can use this because they talk about new map. Map can have ID comma, an object type. So here we are trying to use it because it is ID comma object. Any map which is incoming, so they are having this specific things. We should be very clear about it. Okay. So for an after update, I just indicated the <clears throat> context here, events. So I've mentioned here. It is in is after and is update. It is yes, we have to fall under this. So now the moment someone is trying to update the record, so we will have old version and the new version of the same record is passed to this. Why? Because you are updating a record. See, insert means something that the moment an account is inserted. This is something in a, the moment the record has got updated. So then we fire this. Not on the same. So we are you know impacting onto the contact object. 
So this particular con, no Hyderabad people, do we have any contact? So that is our intention. Okay. So now what I wanted to check here is somewhere. Um, I want to know mm, where is that primary content? Is it there here? So I had a field called as primary name. Oh, this is the restaurant. Sorry for that. So Raja Ram is a record, or maybe single record, or Roman tiles can be multiple record. Okay, anything is fine. So my intention is if you are that to only your um, individual or a business customers getting impacted. So for this record only I'm considering, maybe for restaurant and their associate contacts I'm not considering. My wish is if primary name, you are trying to change to some other guy, uh, or maybe uh, Raja Ram, very beginning what you inserted and now you wanted to change. So for example, Raja Ram Chola, something like this you're saving it. You got this record, but where your content is still says Rajaram. So my intention is, if your account is got updated, if your account is got updated, your child account also should be updated. Okay. Is getting your account is getting updated. Your child record also should be updated, and moreover, accounts um, that to a primary name which is there, to that one you are worrying about. Rajaram is a primary name, the same name you wanted in contact, but you at least worried about the account name. It's okay, account name could be anything that he water he wishes. But the primary name, whatever you're giving, that one should be under the contact. So, though I change the primary name for the contact here, it just didn't get impacted under the child record. So, what shall we do is so now if I change something here, it should get impacted. After saving of this account only are impacting their respective contact. So this is our um, after update logic, which we wanted to work on. So any questions on this or any confusion here? No. Okay. So it's a very simple update. Hey, account to update and then I want to see something in the contact. So currently what happened is you try to update a record, but it didn't get an impact. We have wanted to make some update there. So here, logically, they are good because you have specified event here and you're calling a method here. So they're good here. So we have to all the way pass this value. They are passing also. And the values would be coming till here. So we have to write some logic here in order to progress the update value. First thing is, so we have to take this old value and we have to compare. So why I want to take old map is, basically, I want to compare your primary name is got changed or not. If that value is not equal to the current value, only then there is a statement I should update it, or else there's no meaning at all. So for that, I would use this old map. So firstly, I need to process with the new, new map, like how we did here. Like how we did here. Using a for loop, we try to process, right? We need to process such records. And moreover, um, I need to query the respective contacts also. That makes more sense to us. Here you have to process your uh, child records. It's a very important thing. Um, so for, what, for that, what I want to do is, I would write a, first thing is what we have to do. So if you're dealing with account and the respective contacts, I need to bring it up, right? So to that way, what I'm trying to do is, um, Query the contacts. Query the um, account associated. Query the account associated contacts. That means, so I would say list of contact. It's a list of contact. In this list of contacts, I am saying contact list. So we'll see which list is better or map is better. We'll see that. I'm going to say um, select 
last name from contact where so select last name from contact where account id in so we use in class and colon and then you should use new map dot key set why i'm using this in new map so new map key set means you will give all the ids here keys is ids right well is our accounts so why you want to key so every contact which you process so they have tied up to one account then it is easy to query with this guys right i want just the last name to update the record and of course a contact they count it as an account id and then account id which is tied up to this new map which is flowing in and of course that id based on that id that i'm just querying this for example so this rajaram is a contact if it is the moment i open so in the detail if i go See here, account ID is there. Of course, this is a lookup relationship. They are showing the reference of that name. Ideally, this is an ID. If you see here in the in the down, see in the in, in the progress bar above the here, just above this you see it. Just above this black uh, ribbon you see it. You will see an ID of that record. See HTTPS, McDonald's too, and then that for R, R slash. There you see an ID, right? So what it indicates? So that is something the lookup references to an account record, but that is basically an account ID, where for UI references they are showing the name, but indirectly they are an ID. Everywhere, wherever you see your preferences, there are IDs. Not the phone number, this one. Okay, so why we say that? So this phone number indicates the moment you click here, it try try to dial or it tries to send an email. So like that, they have this alert indication. So what is my context here is the moment I query this, I would get my related contacts. Every accounts and the related contacts I'll get it. So that will help me out to figure out. Okay, this ID is equal to this. Is there any questions here? No. Okay. So with the help of this account ID, I am finding the respective contacts. So that is our intention. So we are ready with the list. So now, uh, based on the incoming record, the first point is very, very important point. The moment this account is getting changed, so we are just pulled up their contact. So we're good here. So you change your account, okay? The respective contact would be pulled up. So we are ready with the where the account associate contacts when the account record is updated okay the moment account record is updated this would come in picture and you got the contact list of course this you have to query because uh, you are changing on to the contact how i will you no know, pull up the contact record to you you are making update in the account how will i know your contact i should pull it so we have to manually query them and get the associate contacts so that is what we have to do here okay we are good there the next thing is mm, so I need to progress with the new map. So prior to that, how will I know? Okay, this is the exact contact that I wanted to change. Or this is the exact contact that would have an impact. So to deal with this, I think I would have a for loop to, uh, for loop to make and construct a map so that this is a contact that record which I wanted to impact. So let's do that for loop. And then I also wanted to have a map. Why this map? So the map, um, contact map basically I want to see. Contact map, so that holds. Account ID and contact record. So guys getting so why this I wanted is so you want to have a key and their associate records. You want to have a key and their associate records. So I could have made this query directly like a map here also. 
this would still work you know this would still work but in this id contact id would be there so what is use of this contact id you are all processing with account id and there associate something you want to pull at that time contact id would not help here see id comma contact is something is meaning that same is same contact id it is present here this this is not useful to us i want account id and there associate contact so tomorrow if i say hey, get the id of this account id you will give value of the contact so that i can easily update you need you getting this so key and a contact if i say key is already a contact id only if you have here so that will be crazy i mean which is not useful to us of now so why i want to this map is if i pass you account id you will give the contact record anyway account id is i have here so all i wanted to pass the account id here and get the associate contact record so if i do like this it is like not good not going to sense it will not help us in any way because i want to pass an id to get the contact record it's not it is not helping out why because the, the, the record why because the record which is flowing in is already having account only so though i query this so i tried to figure out my the latest contacts of that particular account id think that i got it but so this will not help in my pulling the account id here i want purposely account id here not the contact id by doing this queries this whole bunch what it do is it will fetch the this particular records id and each records contact record here so that is not helping us so that's the way so i want, I want to make it a simple list so this con list i will progress and i'll construct a new map which holds these things so contact so contract like something in this to do and so i would indicate a map and that map for sure it will have an id comma contact but this id is not the a normal id it is this is the account id not the contact id i will construct here um so this says count map i will tell you why we are using this with the help of this map only we can fetch their associate contact records so that i can easily update them okay so you have tried to query list and that list is flowing here each record is coming here so now basically what we're trying to do is we're trying to do a map sorry for this contact map we are trying to put it contact map dot put off contact map dot put so here what do you want to try to put it here contact record dot agree so you have to put this contact record dot account id why because my intention is to frame account id comma contact record here you have the contact id or you have brought the account id here and then comma so you are trying to add a contact record so this map indicates account id comma contact record so look at this the account id which are trying to query here look at this last name how can you have account id so you have to query the account id so if you just do that it won't work because you are trying to say hey go get me contact record so it came here it came here we're coming to the list but you didn't query account id only how you are putting this it will throw an error so make sure something that you're trying to deal here that is queried or not very important of course you queried in the where class you're getting the records but where try to in the select fields where you have it so you need to have this I surrender into the proper selected fields okay so this for loop indicates you will have an account id and the associate contact record are there so now we are good with okay this account and this contact so we are very clear here this account id we have and this contact record we have tomorrow if i ask hey give get of this account id if i say you will give this exactly this contact will give it so so we process to the contact associated or the account associated contacts records we have processed so it could be one record or multiple records we don't work here so associate one record 
you bought the counter record here. So any questions till now here? <coughs> So, um, so Muthi, are you, are you I mean, good with this? Yeah. Okay. So we processed of what just the contacts we process. So now let's come to the our new map. So what this is helping out. So let's quickly jump there for loop. So I wanted to process with the values, uh, just not the ID. Map dot values. So this indicates a list of records of accounts comes in here, new maps. Okay, so on the left hand side, account would be there, ACC. Okay, so a bunch of account records are progressed and you move them to the left side. So each record is there here. So now we have to, the purpose of this for loop is, we need to do some update activity. So that is the reason we bought this. Okay, in the new map, what you have, your primary name got updated. So I wanted to update that to a contact. Okay, we'll come there. So now, um, you have whole map here. What this whole map indicates? So let's do that even now, even that also. So we can do a simple if, if condition saying there. If, I know, this account dot so the primary name I say not equal to hmm, not equal to the old map is actually a bunch of records so look at we're gonna process only single record of them um, old map dot get off the account ID, because if I say get account ID, you'll get the account record, right? Get account ID and their dot primary name, we're just doing this activity. So this indicates world map has a bunch of record, but it's specifically passing this account ID and their primary name. So this indicates your old map value of a primary name not equal to the current new values of map of the primary name if they are not equal only then you are progressing getting inside it yes, if i say simply old map dot get id you will give me the entire account record getting right if i pass an id you will give me entire account so this account i got but this account dot primary name it is this because this there's a whole bunch is now i'll get an account record that account record dot primary name not equal to so this account record dot primary name because this is what it's a new value and this old value so you are comparing them if they both are not equal so then you are progressing it is it so now i wouldn't do yeah so now what i do is i want to take contact record okay so i just wanted to verify hey your old name and new name is r and not equal so that means some changes there on a record and so only we are just jumping here okay till now the verification all is done but my the original purpose of this is to update the contact so contact record let's say um contact modify or contact well something i'm just giving the variable name so what is my intention here so if i just pass you an id you give me contact record so where is that map Contact map is holding ID comma contact. This ID is nothing but an account. So let me get that contact. So you can do a prior check also saying that if the map dot contains key. So you're just saying that because it's it's unnecessary thing. No? So first let's check our map whether the contains key which is holding this ID or not. It is good to check, no? So this account ID is there, only then I'll just get inside. So what you do is you just pass this account ID. If the contact map indicates, okay, this associated account ID, there's a contact, only then I'll try to progress an update here. Always we should make sure the bunch which you're trying to progress, they are not empty. So here I'm saying contains key means 
of course an id should be here whatever the account which i'm progressing no? so the account if it is not there then, then it's useless anyway you know from the new time only new key set only we acquired the associate contacts and that context only we constructed and we constructed this map for sure the new map from here only we have all bought it so for sure that account id would be there so and if it is constructed properly and it has a value yes we can get in here like this that contract map dot contains key if account ready we have then we are good to progress the contact record contact map dot get off what we're trying to do get if you pass this id you will give me contact record and it's written type what contact only no if i say get off this id means you will give value that is contact object to that only i'm associating here see the okay so my intention what it was i'm just comparing the both uh, the new values and the old values are compared so if you are good here so let me write this all statement here compare the new map new map account um, primary name with old map account primary name So if they, are, if they are equal, not equal, only then we're getting in. So while getting in, what we're doing is, we're doing a simple check. Check the contact map contains the account ID. Only then we'll get, only then we are processing. Why? Because if I have a contact ID associated to that, then I'll get the contact record. So that we'll get contact record for the associated account ID. If I pass the account ID, it will give me contact. So I pass the account ID, you give me contact. Always get condition is used, pass a key, get the value. So anyway, you see, pass a key, get the value, pass a key. The key is all having ID, so that's the reason you got the contacts. Here also, construct a key along with the value. So we are constructing here. So this is by default already we had here, ID come account. But here, if I just put the same ID come account here, ID come contact here, that will have ID come contact indicates that contact comma contact record. But my intention is, I want to make a chain. I'll give you account ID, you give me contact record. Why? Because all we are processing with the account ID, you know. So I give an account ID, as an account ID here. So you give me contact. So I constructed account ID here. Give me contact. So that was the original case here. So doing this, we checked. We came here. Contains account ID. So the moment I give account ID here, you gave me the contact. So. Um, passing the account ID to get the associated contact record. So which we are about to modify now. So now I got a contact record. We are confident that we got a contact record. So now what is my intention is contact val dot so last name is equals to is equals to contact one dot last name is equals to this account record primary name if I have to give that because both are not equal to null or both are not same then we are getting a good thing here this account dot primary name is the only intention I have to put this to a contact last name that's the only statement which is very important to us. Map the primary name to a contact last name. So our motive is that when I give Rajaram um, 
in his primary name. I'm changing it. I need to update to the customer contact. So that was my motive. So here it is achieving. To get this point to an actual account, you are updating the actual contact. So then this is the point. So look at this for this one single statement only I've written such a big program so why so this doesn't work for a single record you don't think but it can progress for the bunch of records which is flowing in whoever is having our own account and one associate contact so this is all it works so we figured out the contact we construct the map and then we are processing the new list new maps in that we're comparing the old map and if the record is present okay we're trying to update the record Do you have any questions here? No. No. Okay. So we just map the value. Now all together we have to update this record. Since you're not doing anything in the account, sorry, account, you're trying to modify under the contact. Purposely we have to bring the DML statement there. Mm, so get this. Okay. Use to update. Okay. Contact records. So this is a map I'm creating where with this specifically updates the recording thing. So I'm just saying that this could be added anywhere else you wish. Not only here, wherever you feel comfortable, you can add them there. So list of contact list you process and later on for the follow up year also you can add it, no problem. So this update contact list you're trying to create here. And anyway, you modified, right? So all we have to do is update con list dot add, and then you're trying to add this con value. So I didn't use contact to con value is equal to new contact. So such memory is required only for a new record. Anyway, these all are having existing records. Already it has an account record and ID all present. So you need not have a new operator like this. Where? We use new operators, right? <laughs> new operators used for to create memory for new records. If it is an old record, let's say delete it or you're trying to do an update activity, for them such new operators are not required because they already have an idea of the record. Already such memory is all framed, so you need not to worry about it. Only for the new phase, they're getting this. So likewise, we don't have a new operator at all. You look at here. We just got the content record, entire content record. We map to this. So LHS is equal to RHS, fine. And then these guys, particularly, we're trying to take the last name and we're trying to update it. Whatever the primary name we're trying to, to postpone to the or copy to the uh, last name, and then we have an update list here, and we have an update list here. 
and this update list we are trying to add each and every contact record. So this list is ready. All the results are completed. We need to just update this record also. To update a record, you can use the same logic we used here. Hmm? To update record, same logic can use it. So what this indicates? So this this piece of code indicates whether this contact list is not empty and you're trying to, to update that particular list and you say instead of insert you're saying it as an update we're saving this is any questions here so here it was insert logic so database.insert you're using it and you pass insert list here so here I'm using update list. So I'm passing database.update, the entire bunch, whatever the list you that you created. I'm saying that is not empty and you press inside. If it's success, it will say that, hey, this contact record successfully updated. And there's an ID. If something gone got wrong, maybe because of the ID, so it says here. So any question guys? No, I think so. How we progress is all we're trying to get the associate contact records and construct the map. So you are progressing with the new map while inside you're checking this all the condition. If the record is contained, then you're trying to modify or map the value and putting to a list. Always you have to put to a list. The list is the only way it will appear and allow to update us. Okay, you guys think that why this guy is always doing a list? Can't we do it the map? Why you can't update the map? Even if you use a map also, even if you use map also, we use values only here to pass it on. Okay, let's give a try. The try is something that anyway, this this above things you have a list here. So you should be good with the understanding of list. We browse list. Sometimes, yes, of course, we may use a map in terms of updating a record. Why? Your list is which is coming in records can have a duplicate. If that is a duplicate, then it's a crazy thing. It, it don't allow you to save. Hey, your list is having duplicate. How many times for the same idea should update? I won't do it. Because sales says in a list, only one record they can deal with. For the same number of records you're trying to do an activity, it will say list has a duplicate. When this duplicate will not progress. So what that will be so straightforward saying that I won't take it. So at that time, we expect your list should be unique. In order the list to be unique, we need to use map only. And anyhow, so you are trying to update here, right? So this would always go as a list only. So how we take into a map and finally, how do we put it as a list? Look at that, let's how do it. Update list, right? So we're gonna change it to a map. ID comma contact. So this ID is now indicates a proper con ID is of contact only. You not worry about it. Um, your update contact. Map. It's okay. So we know this is a contact map we have. So. For list only use add method. For for a map, which method you use it? Just take can you tell me. For list we use add. For map, what you do? You know how to add an item. Sorry, what is that? For list we use so list dot add I was using in the same way for a map if I want to add an item so what method I have to use here so map dot um, here we have get you're trying to get the record something you wanted to add a value what I think we have add here also insert or push Yes, we have map dot put. Always we have put there. See, we have put and we have get right. 
output is something that you are trying to write a value to a map. Get yeah. is something that you are trying to access a value from a map. Input, you, you are the one who is responsible to construct a map. See, this in contact map, you constructed a map, right? We have constructed the map with the account ID, comma, contact record. So this map, we constructed it. Same thing to map construct here. Constructing a map, this is the only way that we have. Dot put is the only way we have. So this is like inserting a record to a map. So what you're doing is, this is update contact dot put. So what you do here is contact dot conval dot id comma conval. So what it indicates, so this particular record which is came in and that id it is and the modified contact object record you're putting here. You guys getting? So this indicates the map will have surely an id and that one, one record only. If this too many times the id is flowing in, then they are duplicate. It will add only one time because key is always unique. <laughs> And we have associate value. Is getting so now I'll check this map is not empty. There's update contact map dot is empty. We checking it, but anyway we are checking with the list right. So we have to do with the dot values. Dot values. I can't put directly a map and update. No. Even if you have map, we have to convert to a list and then we have to update get map values basically they are list <laughs> um whatever you do end of the day list only can progress in here so map name dot values if i say you'll give a bunch of records which is this list see if this statement is running for a thousand time if you think so they have each account each associate contact record and then each associate contact record should be there and if you don't get the values of the content records, they're all their list of records only. Why we bought this is basically you wanted to have a unique record. So that's the reason I bought this. By doing this, one content ready, one content record only to be there. Then if you get them, they are unique only for us. So this map dot values. The earlier list I'm replacing with dot values. So map dot values also would be replacement of a list only, and they also list only. Is getting so I'm not passing directly map here. Always a DML statement can be done with the list. Is any questions here? No. So we are progressed with the map and then map associated values that we also try to push in and update the record. Okay. So we have both the condition using a map also you can try to update, but the values it's eventually they are also list or flatly we using a list that also we did dealt with. And um, the context of this is also we have used with the new map and old map both also we have compared. So let's come back to our um, use case where I'll try to update the um, primary name. Let's see whether it will work or not. Account Rajaram. So here, let me edit, edit the record. Change the Rajaram Mohan. So that's the name. I'm just giving Rajaram Mohan. I'm just saving this record. This is content also got changed. Rajaram Mohan. So when your account is getting changed. Sorry, account primary name get is changed, Raja Ramohan. And uh, so they based on that related context is also get changed. So did we achieve a use case today? Yeah. Yeah. So I think after update, we have dealt with after insert, after update. So whatever you do here, we are not progressing anything on the account. We are progressing on to the contact records. So basically it indicates you are impacting on some other object. So in meanwhile, what, can we update the same account? So it will say that boss, your record is in read mode. In after insert record or after, in a, basically in after triggers, these accounts are in read mode because already you progressed with the record to update or insert whatever you done. The next thing is that that's the record I'm trying to impact on other object. 
in meanwhile you cannot go say that hey can i account or update the account or deal with an account you can't do them basically they are in trade mode at that particular time their context is just to impact on some other guys not to the same guy because they anyway they have already came out of the update or after the insert or whatever it is so you can't go back and impact them on like me is any questions here so sometimes people talks about trigger recursive what is a trigger recursive is mm. so we indicate that this program to not to be run too many times so now it is single record that you did it so what if people too many people are having on to the same account of the object so someone is having workflow update someone is having process builder update someone is having flow update and then we also have a trigger so the process builder other things are they also trying to update maybe accidentally they are trying to create one record or update in twice so you have to stop them maybe a trigger is allowing to create two times or the process builder is trying to two times so basically you have to do recursive triggers in order to um, deal with the recursive trigger we just simply have to do a boolean to be set there in recursive many people have talked about this um just we need to have indicator boolean here so i'll tell you what is a boolean if the boolean is set to be true so this again i will not run only once i will run let's see any of these guys have talked about this yeah other simple flag that they have here hmm. so so you are setting that public static boolean flag true right so that's a simple uh, a variable they are holding it in order to say that you need not run again i think this is a very bad example how can we what recursive triggers with sales as an example this will need to get let's see So what is recursive triggers if they call uh, recursive trigger say is a trigger which is called itself when some dml operation occurs it's just like, like running an infinite loop so <laughs> we know it's a, we've written a very good practice of code how sure we are that this this triggers would keep not running and then again and again so you are an account trigger you are updating a contact very good you just went and updated the contact hmm in after insert or after update you are trying to update a contact what in contact object you have written a trigger in there after insert or after update you are again updating a contact so from a account you went to contact even they also have trigger so they are trying to update their record and after record is come back to con account you think so it's like vice versa account to contact and they also have trigger they will come back again to ac account <laughs> so you are eventually end up the recursive there both can have triggers right so independently they all both can have a triggers and both can update eventually both the guys so in order to eliminate them if you wanted to update too many times first let's say only one time you want so have a recursive logic like this so that is what he explained about what is recursive trigger is they would have been silly at this <laughs> if it is recursive so he is updating that guy and he is updating this guy it's a majority of c after insert only so too many times that triggers keep running on it got for dev but how many times should i insert to avoid this you need to have a separate class called as avoid recursive so we will have a boolean based on the boolean you're going to set it up so same thing we're going to do here um let's create this class called as avoid recursive so why i say this example is you may have an options sometime in the future if you are dealing with one or more records and too many times it is running we have to avoid recursive triggers so they should not run keep on running the multiple stuff okay avoid recursive simple boolean only first time that is expecting to run and then after you are not expecting to run again and again save this so now in your trigger program you have to say that um <clears throat> Here, here. In this trigger program, you have to say that the whole bunch of the logic you will execute only once if I say. So you can say if 
the statement whatever they mentioned so class name what is that award recursive right award recursive dot it's a static variable no? so why we have static is it is once it is loaded so it will not keep changing and again, again so so by default is true so you are allowing them to execute award recursive dot first run if it is true that only are arriving inside. Control E, Shift Tab. So it will automatically come and set to the respective uh, indentations. Award recursive dot first run. If this indicates true, you're coming here. So the moment you're coming inside, what you're trying to do is you're making them to be false. You're true, you come inside. It's okay, very good. And thereafter was you have to be false. So what happens? You are trying to manually update this value to a false. So again, the trigger is running a thing. It will come here. It is set to be already false. It will never come here. Only one time it will run. I think that is what this guy is interesting. Hmm. So instead after the recursive run, they came in. So they try to avoid to the false. So once again, if the same record is running, it's already set to false. It will never come here. Only if you are true, you will come here, right? So that way we indicate only one time it will run. So here is the same. Here is the first time we set the boolean variable as true here. And the trigger variable is equal to true. Then it goes inside. Yes. And performs the logic. And then we set it to false so that the next time it will not run when the variable is false. Then it will not go to that loop itself. And it will not perform any logic there. If the same time the second trick was coming in, it will not run again. So that is what purely they are indicating here. It's a good example. So we, I would just put here as a point here. Somewhere at the last. So I'll give this URL for reference. Maybe sometime back we can use it. Is any questions? So this ever first run, it's only, I mean, for that, uh, so I didn't have, so if, if you say false, uh, it will become true, right? I mean, yeah. It, no, no. You, are, you are updating a value and then you're proceeding on to the next. You will all execute the same. Okay. Again, if, if again if some record is firing up there, so you have eventually land to an account record and already this first one would be turned to be false now. So it will never execute again. Okay, but uh, what about if you are opening a new, new one again, it will come and uh, it won't... Uh... No, no, I'm saying... Mm -hmm. What happens, you know, you are trying to do an edit here uh -huh. and you updated the record. Yeah. So this update should be only one time should happen. Okay. It should not happen two times. Oh, internally, okay. Two times the update trigger of a query should not fire or two times then nothing should be fired. Why that is two times happening is somewhere some uh, configuration stuff that you did at some process builder. Yeah. That is firing this again, this trigger again, you think. Okay. So. Maybe for update is fine. You're updating the same record is fine. What if it is insert logic? Two records would be inserted. Yeah. So to avoid that, okay, let's add trigger to run only one time if you think. And then this is the logic. You got to know somewhere you figured out my, my trigger is running twice, what to do now? To make sure your recursive, you're not doing it. So one of the examples I said, right? Your account, you're doing it. You're impacting to the content object. Even the content object can also have a trigger. They can also have an after logic. In the after logic, if they're trying to get update back to the account, if you think what is the problem. So you are again looping back to the account, you know. You did update here, it went to the contact. And they are doing an update, again, it came back to the account. So this is again in a loop there. For them, you're saying that, hey boss, only one time I'll allow you to modify. If you keep running, then you are running in an infinite loop. Because you update I and I update you. Again, you update me here. <laughs> I update you. So in order to avoid this, okay, let's say only one time this guy's run. So I have this recursive logic here. You got the point? Right. Okay. So I think that way, before set before update, before delete, I'll be done. Any further questions on to the triggers?
I think for after delete, um, very very rare case we do it. Something that on a on a delete um, an account with the old map ID, I cannot look for it because already it is got deleted. Mm -hmm. I'll figure out a scenario for an after delete because where you say where you say okay this record has already got deleted there hello guys yeah so for an after delete i'll tell you the scenario because sure either something you're trying to delete because what happens you know if i delete the rajaram here if i delete the rajaram record here so my con my question is rajaram mohan would be there as a contact or not so let's quickly delete and check i delete the account here hmm, okay this guy is treating is hot So no more reading as the heart, so didn't think the record. So would my contact be present here or not? I'll go to the customer contacts. So would I be able to see Rajaram Mohan there? <laughs> my Rajaram is not there. Let's go to recycle. See this. Since I deleted the account and their associate contact also has went up, account and contact basically they are holding a master digital relationship internally. If deleted an account, contact is vanished. So let me restore this guy. You see this. And this is also one of the trigger even, which is called as undelete. So when you come back, what should I do for you? Because until it is basically trying to do an insert activity. So do you have any complications that you wanted to have? We can also have some logic there. Okay, anyway, fine. So account and contacts are looks like they are masked until to their internal. If delete an account, their contact is also getting deleted. Until the account, right? I came and saw in the customer contact, they were not there. So in this case, you need not to have any after delete record because you delete an account content went off. So what is after logic required there? But for few custom objects, still, if you delete a record as a lookup relationship, still the child would be present. They are called orphan records. <laughs> of course, you want to delete the orphan records the moment you are trying to delete the parent record. It's easy. I mean, it's a wonderful use case where you say that I deleted my parent and my associate all the child records should be deleted. So what is the cost for that? How do I do it? So there it comes after delete record. Or, so the moment you try to delete a account, so we are preparing all your checklist of your, who is all your child records. So we can delete such records there also. For doing this, which logic would you use it? That would be the question. So, so I'll figure out a situation scenario for that and after trigger, for after delete specifically, I'll bring them up. Because, so the moment you delete it, the one record, it would have went to the associated records and this particular reference it will be vanished because after deleting a account, account you say, the no more a reference would be here. And then we are trying to do an after uh, date logic. If I try to find my associate record, where is it got deleted? If I try to find, so this is already blank. I cannot find the reference of this ID. For example, like this. Look at this. Since you have account is referenced in the um, in this particular contact, so you just pass the new map values key set and try to find this account ID and the associate contact you bought it. 
what if we delete that account and no more of the reference is present? Still, the contact would be blank. Though the record of contact are there, the account is blank. How can I get such records? <laughs> you have a contact record who has an account ID matched to this key, so you bought this record. Now I deleted the contact account you think. So ID which is coming here, the moment it comes here, this contact record. So your reference is already vanished. That is what it happens in after deleting. After deleting the account, you cannot see here. It automatically would have vanished there. So for example, let's come to staff. Restaurant is McDonald's selling on his um, account, right? So there's always a chance. This could be blank also. So assume that McDonald's is selling on a restaurant and deleted. So this particular record become blank. Automatically it'll have blank like this. Now you are saying that reference. Hey, the ID which is passing over the account ID, get all the staff. Where is the rest? Firstly, where the restaurant is mapped here? The moment you delete the record reference is lost here. So we have to interestingly find, okay, this is the account record which I delete, and I need to get them priorly. These are the associate staff. Because of deleting the restaurant, all the staffs I should delete them. Is getting? So that references we have to make sure we are doing it properly. Okay, I'll bring that use case for that. So other than any questions you guys have? No. Okay. So somehow, um, I think we are good with all the triggers. So one of the scenarios is uh, simple after after don't have to, after don't have to get it. So I'll get that down on show. So from tomorrow, <clears throat> same 7.30 of my time. So we'll start with advanced course. So this, this advanced course I'll outline. First thing, what it will be. Um, so, so far my pending activity under the dev side, if you think, two things. One is SOSL I have to do and then after delete these two things only after do it okay and then basics of test class we have to see them anyway in my advanced class i would cover up the basic test class if it is not covered or the advanced things i'll write the test class there so this eventually would be covering an upcoming thing sosl and after but i should make a separate video and then have to send it out this is a separate video I'll make and send out. So it's an ideal in the easy understanding would be there's nothing much different. So basic sub test class is while doing advanced class will cover it up. Otherwise, uh, VF pages and controllers. So these are things for classic development, it's just still be in progress. So all this I wanted to progress when we are doing with the uh, advanced class. All this I want to do whenever we're doing the advanced class. Test class and their extension of higher level um, advanced test class, it's all can be achieved one game. Controllers and the VF page is not a big deal, so we can accommodate one or two days for this and we can finish it up. Because I wanted to give highlights of what VF page and controller is doing, that's it. Because uh, in going future, there be very less number of thing, things you'd be used here. Maybe five to 10% of the companies would be using this. Already majority they have moved to RM and from there they already moved to LWC. In a forward direction we have to learn. So this is just for understanding if a project has some VF pages, how to understand them. So for this two classes will be there for sure. So in this advanced class, I already indicated. So the first kickoff would be on um, asynchronous batches. Of course, this is also advanced class only for the advanced apex. And then we'll write some scenarios for integrations. So first, let's cover this. Um, in that one Zapix class, so we're going to talk about um, asynchronous programming. So this programming could have a batch or can have a cable apex or scalable class or cable apex. So this all will see how all these three works. And then dynamic programming already we have a kickstart of it. So it's the same dynamic programming I would apply in batch class also to construct some fields and then do the logic things. 
we will do here we will use this metadata also we would try to use it and we will write some test classes here so while doing this test class i will accommodate this basic here and this test class won't stop here it should keep going on for lws logic whatever you write or something that integration whatever you write test class would be there always because without a test class you cannot move the code to production every apex class should be tied up to a, a test class it's must or else you cannot move to a production maybe from one sandbox to another sandbox you can push a code like said they have to test test uat but you cannot really push to a production for that they require a code coverage for sure so this would be talking i mean i would be this this i would be king of one um,